back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a communication diagram as part of a robustness analysis. So let's first recap what has been done so far. So I have designed a system, a very small system actually, which stores movies, which has a add movie and show all movies feature. Uh, in order to de model the technical details of this system, I have created a very basic class diagram which details the data that will be used in the system uh, has designed the screens add movies and show all movies which are boundary classes or view classes I've created a mainframe which will organize which screen is visible I've designed a controller which serves like a uh, middleman and logic class and a data storage which will take care of the actual data storage uh, the mainframe controller and data storage I've all classified as control classes since they contain logic and not GUI or data. The movie itself obviously is an entity class. Okay, so what am I going to do with a communication diagram? Uh, with the communication diagram, I'm essentially going to communicate the communication that takes place between classes towards the accomplishment of a single use case scenario. So what does that mean? Basically, I'm going to uh, model the messages exchanged between classes towards the goal of a use case in normal human language. Contrary to the sequ sequence diagram, which I will discuss in my next video, uh, the communication diagram describes this communication purely in human language, and well, the sequence diagram does it in methods. So without further ado, let's get started. So new diagram communication diagram so this one should be called after the use case so add movie communication diagram there we go and let's see if I can make this thing a little bit smaller because I don't need this much space and I don't like to scroll too much so there we go that's better then I'm going to rename this interaction after my use case scenario. So in this case it would be add movie. Since the communication takes place between the classes that I have modeled inside my class diagram, I am going to drag the classes that are relevant to this scenario to my communication diagram. So that would be the add movies class, which is the screen the mainframe which regulates all the screens and gives access to the controller the controller itself and the data storage which will actually store the movie and lastly since we are also dealing with the actual storage of data I'm gonna put the data class there called movie so there we go okay I'm gonna make my properties window a bit smaller because I don't need it, the whole thing. Okay, so towards the accomplishment of the Add Movies scenario, a button on the Add Movies page will want to store a movie, and that will be done via the mainframe. So the message exchanged between the uh, Add Movie and the mainframe class will be Add Movie, and given a number one. Uh, because this is the first message in the whole sequence of messages. So how to draw a message? Well, basically you click on message, click on the first class, click on the other class. Very simple. Okay, the mainframe itself, the purpose of the mainframe is just to switch the screens that are being displayed. So the mainframe frame itself is not capable of adding a movie. So he will just pass the request along to the controller. So... 1.1 because this is the second step add movie so let me just uh, shift this a little bit so that it becomes a bit more tidy to read okay the controller has well cannot actually save the movie because that's the purpose of the data storage but is capable of creating a movie object to facilitate the save because it has logic so in this case it would be uh, step 1.2 create movie and I think I misclicked just now 1.2 create movie 
so there we go. It's, uh, I'm saving in between to avoid uh, things from crashing if I save towards the end. That has a tendency of happening. Um, after the movie object is created, the controller will send the movie object to the data storage. So the data storage will be asked step 1.3 store movie. And again, let me just shift this a little bit. There we go. And that's it. That's our first communication diagram for the use case uh, add movie or create should be add movie. That's what I accidentally changed just now. There we go. Add movie. So that's the first use case implemented. So now let's do the second use case. Show all movies. So for that, I'm going to once again create a new communication diagram. So right click on model, new diagram, create UML communication diagram. So this would be show all movies com diagram. There we go. And again, let's see if we can resize this a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit too small, a bit bigger would be better. Okay, all right. Rename my interaction to show all movies. Okay, so in this case, again, I'm going to drag the relevant classes to my communication diagram. In this case, I don't need add movies because that screen is not even involved in this whole XJ communication. So it's going to be show all movies. And again, the, the mainframe, because the mainframe regulates the screens. The controller. And the data storage. Okay, why am I not including the movie? Because I'm going to assume the movies are stored in the data storage. So the controller will just have to ask the data storage to retrieve it and be done with it. Uh, we're not going to access any actual data on the movie class in this case. Uh, I would have to do that if I were to model a scenario like um, display movie details. But in this case, I'm assuming I just want to see a list of uh, movies. So just one go retrieval from data storage will suffice. Okay, again, I'm going to have to model my messages. So from show all movies to mainframe. And in this case, the message, uh, since this is scenario number two, show all movies. So the screen will request that from the mainframe. Okay, I think there's a little bit of a glitch here, but it will correct in a moment. See, there it is. Sometimes the screen doesn't redraw properly. Uh, so show all movies will ask the mainframe to show all movies. The mainframe, again, needs to pass this along to the controller. So 2.1, show all movies. There we go. Then the controller, again, which contains well, logic that can do stuff. In this case, we have no choice but to ask the data storage to actually retrieve all movies for him. In which case the data storage will return an array of all the movies stored in the system. Uh, but that is the kind of detail that I'm not going to bother with, uh, with, not at this level. So let me just uh, reposition this a little bit so it looks more tidy. Uh, this little arrow doesn't always come out very nicely. Okay, anyway, there we go. So there we have it. Uh, communication diagram number one, communication diagram number two. Designing the messages exchanged between the classes in the class diagram to implement two use cases in this case. Alright, so in my next video I will talk about how these scenarios will be implemented on the Java method level using a sequence diagram. So, see you next time. Mm -hmm.